Good afternoon. My name is Casey Zambergen and I'm here from OP5 and we're going to talk this afternoon about monitoring OpenStack with Manaska. OP5 is a Swedish company. We've been around since 2004. Um, we started off with the Nagios product, uh, project and uh, we forked that uh, several years ago and if we've been monitoring static infrastructure using Nagios um, and our Nagios fork for many years. Here a couple of years ago though, we saw something changing in the marketplace and one of those things was OpenStack and we saw these dynamic environments that a Nagios product just really didn't stand up to. Um, environments with containers and serverless functions, those type of things. And so we started on the Manaska project and that's what we're going to talk about today. So when we think about monitoring, when we start looking at the average data center, if you look like, for example, an AWS data center, has approximately 20,000 servers. And when you think about the increased number of devices and the on-demand deployments for cloud, the ephemeral moving processes, and distributed environments, all of a sudden, traditional monitoring just doesn't work anymore. When you have to go configure the environment for a dynamic environment, humans can't keep up. And that's really the crux of the conversation today, is humans can't keep up, therefore we have to have automated systems in place. And the three things, the three big V's that I want to talk about today are the volume, velocity, and variety of data. Those three things together make it necessary for us to have some type of an automated system to monitor our, our OpenStack deployments. And I'd like to introduce an idea of dynamicity. And what is dynamicity? Dynamicity is essentially, what's the rate of change in your environment? And if you start thinking about how monitoring works, what are we trying to do? We're trying to capture time series data, and at a very simple level, it could be something like, you know, the pod.io.readbytes per second or it could be a CPU metric, or it could be a disk I.O. metric. It could be any type of metric that we're trying to capture in a time series database. This is really simple stuff. Everybody's been doing this for years and years. And a product like Nagios or other products in the marketplace are good for doing that. But let's look what happened when we introduced dynamicity. You start looking at these different types of environments. Some of them are physical infrastructure that live forever. Once you go implement a switch, the switch is going to sit in the cabinet until one of the power supplies on it goes out and you swap it out. If you want to monitor that with a static infrastructure, that's fine. When we start looking at virtual infra infrastructure and VMs, then we look and we see those don't live as long. Now you can still provision those manually, but it's going to be a pain and it's going to be difficult to keep up with them. And then we get to the, what we call the ephemeral layer, the application layer, where you have containers that are spawning and going up and down. We have one customer that monitors about 250,000 IPs with our product. And for a, a certain event, they needed to spawn 40,000 new um, containers to take care of that event. There's no way to humanly go in there and, and set up 40,000 new containers and then have them spin down. And that's where the idea of dynamicity comes in. So let's assume that you've got 20,000 servers with four microservices per server, and you have basically 100 metrics per instance equals about 100,000 instances. And you say, you know, out of that, about 2 million of those are long-lived. And about 8 million of those are ephemerals. They're going up and down. They're, they're dynamic. But then when you start looking into the dynamicity and the elasticity of this process, a 0.01% rate of change equals about 6.9 million new time series per day. And when you start dealing with data at that velocity, you've got to have some way to manage it. So what should we monitor? We say you should monitor everything. And you've got to have a tool that monitors everything from your physical servers to your actual virtual functions. And finally, when we look at the OpenStack architecture, it's a complicated architecture, and so we have to have visibility. And Horizon doesn't give us visibility into monitoring. It allows us to provision, but it doesn't give us the visibility that we need. And so our answer to that is our product, which is Manaska. Manaska is a project that we've been contributing to. We're one of the top contributors to the project. We're very proud of it. And to get, talk a little bit more about that, I'd like to introduce my colleague, John Cavanaugh. Do you know how many minutes we have left? Go. Yeah, I don't How's everybody doing today? Good, so my name's John Cavan. I'm a, a lead technical sales engineer for OP5. And um, uh, Casey did an excellent job. I don't know if I could do any better than that, but I'll give it a shot. So uh, as he already mentioned, a little bit of background on OP5 is that we uh, started working with Nagios about a decade ago, a little more than that, uh, with a heavy interest in taking an open source project and just making it a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. And I hope to kind of explore a little bit of what we've done with Manaska and, uh, and some of the same kind of thinking behind that as well. 
So uh, a little introduction to Manaska. Manaska is an open source project that is, is designed to scale and handle uh, millions of metrics if that's what you need to consume. Uh, and also in a way that allows your, your monitoring to become something that's resilient, redundant, uh, fault tolerant. Some of the main features there, you can see event-driven architecture, a real-time streaming engine that has some bells and whistles that can be extended upon, uh, a push-based system to allow you to have uh, much more uh, throughput. It is an official OpenStack project, as you can see here. A little bit about the stack itself. Some of the components that, that are included and involved, of course, there's a Manaska API that sits in the middle that consumes all of the uh, inbound metrics, uh, and then some, some uh, other parts and pieces of, of this stack are Grafana and uh, Horizon dashboard, of course, uh, leveraging a keystone for authentication, and then we have the agent of, for uh, your servers and systems. The Horizon dashboard and the Grafana uh, dashboard are, are there for visualizations, for creating uh, and managing and defining alarms. And also authentication through Keystone is uh, leveraged by the agent. So you would install the agent on a server, for example, and that agent would authenticate. Uh, and, and, and it also achieves multi-tenancy as well. The power behind the numbers that can be achieved with a uh, Manaska project is the Kafka bus. This is a pub sub uh, system that uh, you'll see as, as the stack evolves in the slide deck here, uh, makes a lot more sense of what different components are, are using that Kafka bus to both consume and to add to uh, the information exchanged and managed and viewed and uh, inside of the, the Manaska project. So as you can see here, as it's starting to unfold, there's different parts and pieces. Um, you have the configuration of this uh, tool with Mona uh, MariaDB. The notification engine is handled off of the Manaska bus, or Kafka bus. The streaming engine would allow us to extend upon what's inside and being collected by the Manaska system. And then what we're looking to explore on is uh, taking what CAF is collecting and using it to, to uh, further dive into and explore data. Maybe that's with, um, root cause analysis, for example, or uh, artificial intelligence of some kind, machine learning, and, and take that to another level. A little bit more detail here in this slide that's showing you uh, the full stack of Manaska. On a few benefits here uh, when it comes to Manaska, I'll, I'll just quickly talk about the, the data bus, the event, um, the events that flow into the Kafka bus can be taken and used in other ways. You can see here with the notification engine, it's leveraging what's inside the data bus for, uh, for alerting, but then also the streaming engine allows you to have things like uh, transformation or uh, data enrichment or uh, further, th further work on what we've collected. Then we can you know, make some uh, anomaly detection or uh, machine learning on that data. When it comes to the alerts, the alerts can be very easily managed, right? So if you have your hosts inside of Manaska, you have your ho hosts inside your OpenStack, your containers or hosts or servers, uh, you can look at the alerts and manage or add and, and, and manipulate them in a very simple way. Uh, and that's done by, for example, a very simple expression of you know, something like a function of like average, and then your host name, or the metric name you want to collect on, and then the host name definition by itself. And so if you look at this last section of, of this slide here, you'll see you know, some different ex ex kind of ex explanations of how this might work. But towards the end, it starts to make a little bit more sense of how this would work. Um, you can see the average disk space uses the metric. Um, and then specifically here, it's calling out the host name, 
and then saying, you know, uh, greater than or equal to 99%. In our world as engineers, you know, we look at little, even simple metrics of collecting and alerting as things like CPU, memory, disk space. We want to be able to see and explain those or define them in a very simple way. This uh, alerting inside Grafana that's set up through the Manaska alert section allow you to do that. It's very simple to understand, especially when you start to jump in there and, and explore a little bit of, of how it's set up. So uh, before, before getting into a conclusion, I'll, I'll go through just a couple simple things with you uh, to talk about how we've thought about Manaska and, and, and how OP5 as a company thinks. Uh, as I mentioned before, we, we, we love and have been contributing to open source for a long time. Uh, part of that has started with Nagios years ago, uh, and we, we said to ourselves, how can we, um, how can we look at uh, Nagios, uh, and for our customers who are asking us to deploy this solution inside their environment, how could we improve upon that and make it better? OP5 as a company took uh, Nagios, we forked it into its own project called Neiman, and we started making improvements and adding things on and created a dashboard and we created some visualization tools and, and ways of working with it better. And, and throughout the years that we've had this project, uh, we've worked with Nagios and Neiman, we've, we've always asked ourselves, what can we do to make this a little easier for customers to use, better for customers to use? Um, and so it's in our blood, it's in our DNA to, to think about products and projects that way. A, uh, being able to contribute back to the open source community. B, making life better. So those are the kind of the fundamentals of what we try and, try and achieve with, with our work, with our labor. Kind of to, to point a little bit out about those specific details, uh, I want to share this with you. This is uh, a contributions to the Manaska project by our company and then more specifically by the people within our company. So, uh, on the left-hand side, you're going to see that uh, we, we kind of keep up with uh, one of the largest con contributors who also owns the Manaska project, which is Fujitsu. Uh, and you'll see that you know, next to that, the big orange section, uh, again on the left side, the left pie chart, you'll see OP5's contributions. And this is over the lifespan of the project. So we've made significant contributions to this project over the lifespan, which hasn't been around that long. On the right, thing I'm most proud of, um, and I'm not sure if we have any of those gentlemen here with us. Uh, is Amir here, Martin? Okay, I'll, I'll mention I'm very proud of, of one of our developers, Amir. He's a top contributor um, to the Manaska project at this point, and he's uh, above the, the main contributor from uh, Fujitsu. So it's pretty exciting for us to see that we're giving back as a small company. We're in two locations, of two large locations in Europe and the US, are giving back into the community and making these improvements into a project like this. Uh, we see that as, as part of our heritage. And I'll quickly just um, kind of sum up with a, you know, a, a story. Uh, there's a, a man by the name of Danny Meyer and um, if you kind of know restauranteurism, uh, there's approximately 800 restaurants in New York created every year. Uh, out of the 800, only 20% survive five-year time span. So 160 that are, they make it. Uh, Danny Myers developed, or he, he started 25 restaurants over his lifetime. And, uh, and out of the 25, 24 still exist today. And why, did, why is that so? I mean, if you think about how on averages, no one does that. No one is that successful. Um, we've kind of taken the same approach with, with open source. We want to take, uh, take open source and see it have a lifespan that's longer than it might have if someone hadn't picked up the mantle and cared for it. Danny, uh, the, the reason he attributes his success uh, is because he, he looked at the clients and asked what they needed, what they wanted out of a restaurant when they went in and visited. So for us, OP5 as a company, we like to look at open source projects and say, what do customers want? What do they need? How can we make it better? We want to give some of those parts and pieces back to the community and then contribute by being consultants and engineers who can help and go deploy some of these solutions that are open source but that can be sent into or used and, and consumed by, by corporations all over the world. That, that excites us. Um, and, and just to, to, on these three points here, we look at Manaska as a hub for doing monitoring as we did for Nagios in the past. Uh, we want to explore new spaces and see what, uh, what can be done with, uh, with Manaska. And then finally, you know, we have engineers and consultants back at our booth, so please stop by and say hi. 
Um, we'll explain some of these things here, like the self-healing that we've explored with Kubernetes and deploying Manaska inside of Kubernetes, uh, the throughput that you can achieve with, with uh, Manaska through the solution that we've developed, uh, and some of the other things here that are pretty awesome, and we'd love to talk about it with you. So um, I'll just quickly say thank you. Um, it's, it's almost, it's almost scary to talk amongst many talented, very awesome engineers that have been, that are visiting this conference. It's, it's daunting a bit to, to start out and speak to you. But I got to say, uh, it's been awesome to see all the cool faces and have some great conversations. So uh, please come say hi to us. We want to talk with you. Uh, no question is, is, is a, a bad question. Or, you know, we want to hear everything you have to say and ask. So please do stop by. Thank you for attending this afternoon.